Hello or welcome to CNTV weekly crypto and fintech panel discussion. So today we'll be talking about the uh, implication and interpretation of the current state of crypto market, seeing what is really happening, the way the cryptocurrency market is really uh, reacting. So we really experienced a lot of you know, uh, things, uh, most especially at the beginning of this year. And later, uh, about two months ago, we saw how everything is reacting. So today, uh, we have some experts uh, who, who are joining us from different parts of the world to talk about uh, this particular topic. So uh, let me uh, first of all welcome uh, Rudy Shaw Senior, who is a tech strategy. Rudy, you are welcome to CNTV. Uh, Rudy Shaw Senior, who is a tech. Strategy. Thank you, thank you for the invite, and I'm uh, really happy to be uh, on this platform. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you. So also joining him is Jack Nicogassin, who is the CEO Arise. Jack, you are welcome to CNTV. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Really excited. It's a pleasure to have you uh, to be back on, on this program, so we really appreciate that. Uh, we are expecting uh, Fred uh, Brandon to be joining us, who is the founder of Brand New Technologies. He's uh, joining us, he will be joining us soon. So while we await him joining us, uh, let's uh, proceed. Uh, so uh, this program is uh, proudly sponsored by Hot Community and also Coin News Extra. I'm your moderator for this program, Lee Uchamwa here. So let's uh, get started to the program. Um, let's first of all know uh, the state that we are currently in now. What state are we currently in? You know, there have been a lot of discussion here. People don't really know if we are if we have really entered a bear market or if we have entered a bull. Or we are still running on a bull run. So what do you think? Uh, let me start with you, uh, Jack. What do you think uh, we are what the state of cryptocurrency market now? I <laughs> I think it's uh, I think the development of the whole ecosystem is progressing more or less as anticipated by the people who have been involved with the ecosystem for uh, a number of years now. What we're seeing is that cryptocurrencies and blockchains are kind of coming out of the woodworks. They are becoming more and more mainstream. They are becoming more and more regulated. They are becoming <clears throat> uh, more and more tested. And now with these next generation blockchains we're seeing or next generation protocols, we are seeing the development of applications in the application layer, which are now finally making uh, efforts to make digital tokens, cryptocurrencies, and all these things uh, go mainstream. I think that we are seeing the util utilization of, of blockchains with the uh, explosion of DeFi. Uh, what we're now seeing happening um, uh, in the entire ecosystem, I think it's, it's really, really amazing. But I think it is still just a natural step towards a much more digital way of managing our money because cryptocurrencies are still in when looking at at global trade and global finances cryptocurrencies are still just a very small part of it but they are still very young so considering how fast these things are growing um, I'm extremely positive about the whole ecosystem I don't think that we have really seen anything yet before that before our parents and our sisters and our, our, our brothers start using these apps very easily we are not where we need to be and, and today it's still very difficult and nerdy to use these blockchains and these systems but we are getting more and more done in the application layer and that's why we see these different tokens rise in price and being utilized more and so much focus around Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies it really, really helps support. Um, yeah, I don't know if I answered your question. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's very nice. I would like to get the opinion of Rudy. Rudy, uh, uh, just briefly, uh, what, what is the state of uh, cryptocurrency market at uh, this moment? What do you think? What stage are we? Yeah, uh, thanks again. I couldn't agree more with, with Jack. 
uh, I think we're in the early, early, early stages of something that's going to change the world. And this is for sure. We've seen how the Internet from, you know, creation, uh, it's almost been 40 or 50 years. And where is the Internet today? And we still haven't realized the full power of the Internet. So imagine a 13 years old project where, you know, it's still in many discoveries, many early stages. Uh, you know, you cannot say uh, that it is mature. People are not there yet. Every day we see projects. I'm happy. Uh, more uh, adoption, more, you know, people getting in. But definitely on the financials of the Bitcoin, we are uh, definitely in a bullish market as ever we can be. You know, uh, it's not something uh, we have to, uh, you know, two people can talk about it. It reminds me a lot with the 2018 crash that, ha that happened, but definitely much, 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 much more uh, complex. You know, we have China banning miners in the last couple of uh, weeks. We have Elon having fun and dodging actually around left and right. Uh, we don't have, you know, regulations on this and hopefully we should not. But anyway, and we have regulations left and right towards allowing and disallowing. We have the European Central Bank issuing memos, uh, England Central Bank trying to, you know, uh, evade the investors and so on. So there's many warnings as far as Bitcoin itself, but on the blockchain technology and the market itself, it's a, it's a whole future, uh, you know, ahead of us. Interesting to know that. Uh, in case you are just joining us, we are talking about this is CNTV weekly blockchain cryptocurrency and fintech panel discussion. We are talking about implications and its application of the current state of cryptocurrency market. So, uh, you know, it is going to be a, a, an interactive session. So, if you have questions uh, to uh, ask about this topic, about this discussion, drop it on the comment section and our TV app will be able to uh, reach out to you. So um, let's uh, get to know, so we're talking about this topic. We've seen the uh, adoption by institutional in investors. We have seen the adoption by some uh, countries. We see the likes of micro strategy buying uh, Bitcoin. So what's your, what's, what's your take on that, uh, Rudy? Yeah, uh, well, the, you know, again, uh, that's the next stage of uh, standardization and adoption. And this is what we all want. And that's the point where we are really uh, waiting for. Um, there's a mood change, of course, that has benefited not only Bitcoin, but also the entire uh, crypto market or uh, ecosystem as well. So, you know, we have to really be happy about this. Uh, things like increasing institutional adoptions, of course, growing and emerging global markets, uh, booming developer activity. You know, the fintechs are tapping into, uh, you know, the blockchain, Bitcoin, Ethereum. Uh, Ethereum is, you know, future is, is something also to look at versus ADA and others, not just Bitcoin now. Uh, even though, you know, whatever happens on the Bitcoin, it will, it will follow all of the other markets. Uh, so there's uh, growth on emerging markets, yes. Uh, you know, a lot of things, a lot of rise on the crypto assets and having fundamental impact in the near future. And taking, for example, what happened in El Salvador, you know, um, it's, uh, it's a way of sm smoothing the flow of funds. It's, it's giving free form of bureaucracy and sanctions in a country that is really suffering uh, financially. And, you know, it needed the help of IMF and so on. And now, you know, with this step, we don't know what's going to happen. Okay, IMF issued a statement. So <laughs> we, but definitely we're going to be seeing more people transacting in uh, Salvador. And this is a big time inclusion for them. Also, we're going to be seeing more countries. Of course, uh, it will not be, I don't, I don't think it will be more on the developed countries. It will be on the developing countries. Uh, same way adoption uh, as, as Salvador. Uh, also, we have some countries already put limits 30% uh, to safeguard the massive price fluctuations and hedge against big losses and so on. So we will also, I think, uh, see uh, that percentage uh, dropping or increasing to 40, 50 and 60%. So as we, you know, uh, as a summary, there's a lot of things happening to really try to uh, enhance the, this whole uh, ecosystem by itself. 
Okay, interesting. Um, let me look at this. You know, um, we are looking at uh, adoption by institutional investors and also uh, countries. And let me look at this uh, as a value adoption of Bitcoin. Uh, Jack, what would you say about it? Is it a good or is the cryptocurrency ecosystem mature enough for this kind of uh, adoption by a nation? What is your take on that? Uh, there's, there's a few things I, I want to try to touch upon. Uh, and I think it's important to Bitcoin has has officially like died more than I think 400 times. There's this Bitcoin obituary where you can see every time Bitcoin has been declared dead like, um, over the years. And what we have seen happening is that Bitcoin has survived all of these all of these hits. And and how come? Well, Bitcoin doesn't have like a company or a corporation that that runs any legal lawsuits and manages PR, and how do they survive these, these things that, that it faces? Well, because when, with Bitcoin, you have not only just the brand, brand value, but you have the entire community behind this specific product and this specific brand, and a lot of people want this to succeed. Now, with China mining, uh, banning mining, uh, I don't even know the details of it, because it has happened a few times already, uh, where you know there's this news about mining being banned. Well, we already have an issue with too much centralization of mining pools and too much of the computing power being produced in one place. I mean, maybe it's even healthy for the ecosystem to get even more distribution. We have to remember that Bitcoin is not a static thing. It is like a living organism that can develop, develop and grow. That's the beauty of its open source nature. And initially, when Bitcoin was conceived, it was intended to be a peer-to-peer -peer form of cash, whereas today it is a longer, uh, it's a long-term store of value, which a hedge against the insecurities behind fiat. And, and there's a lot of usage, I think, that where there's kind of consensus about this is what Bitcoin is being used for. And if you choose to invest in Bitcoin with the purpose of it becoming a store of value or, or some kind of hedge, you also invest in the community of Bitcoin and you trust like you would trust the team in a company you trust the community to win these battles that are faced so with bitcoin mining being regulated or something happening you have the strength of millions of individuals and, and a lot of companies behind that wants this to succeed so that's you you do not only invest in say in an invisible coin that we all agree has value. It's not it's not just that you invest in millions of people and a lot of companies that want this thing to become a legit thing. And we are still in its kind of infancy. But I started involving myself with cryptocurrencies in 2013 when I bought my first Bitcoin, empty box, which I then lost. And but but from then. We've seen, that's funny, I've, I've seen Bitcoin die or seen these dystopic scenarios again and again and again and again. But the truth is that Bitcoin is like $30,000 or something. I don't even look every day. And, and it's still, when you look over a 10 year chart, it still shows that this is a secure investment opportunity. And the battles that Bitcoin has faced, it has won because of the strength it has in numbers. And that's why institutional investors are now entering the realm of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Because how can you as an institution argue to your shareholders not to invest in Bitcoin when you have a decades of proof that this is a good investment opportunity? Then why are you not investing in it if it is? And that's, that's what we're seeing happening. And we're seeing development of protocols uh, to support institutional trade and institutional investors within regulated DeFi and within uh, uh, central uh, centralized DeFi and all kinds of different concepts, permission DeFi. So it's, it's amazing what's happening. I think that Bitcoin has a future, but I think that, let's say, in 10 years, I can quite easily imagine Bitcoin without the Bitcoin blockchain. I think that we are going to see a point in time where it's so ridiculously expensive to mine the last bitcoins that the community just kind of agrees to burn it, destroy it, save the ledger in like a torrent file and say, look, this is the final state of the ledger. And now Bitcoin only moves as a wrapped entity. 
wraps Bitcoin on, you know, on, on you know, Ethereum or on Polkadot or on Cardano. It, 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 it's, a, it's still a valuable instrument between parties. But you know, why would, we also do not go to distant meteors to mine gold. We could, but it's too expensive, so we don't do it. So when it becomes too expensive and too ridiculously stupid to uh, build data mining towers, you know, or cities, then we'll, we'll probably stop it and say, look, it doesn't matter. We'll burn the last million. We'll agree that, you know, if the majority of the community agrees, we don't care about the lost Bitcoin. We don't care about the ones that haven't been mined yet. The miners, it's not profitable to mine. You don't get the block and nobody's transferring Bitcoin on the Bitcoin ledger. But we can imagine Bitcoin existing without the Bitcoin blockchain. And I think Bitcoin has a future, but if you put your money in Bitcoin, you trust that it will develop and the community will steer it in a different direction than it is today. Don't take today's problem as a proof that Bitcoin is dead. Today's problems will be solved. That's what I'm trying to convey. Okay, interesting. Nice one. Uh, 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 Fred Brandon has just joined us. Uh, Fred, uh, are you with us? Fred is the founder of Brand New Technologies. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Thank you for yeah, you're uh, inviting me. You're welcome. Uh, your, your video is off. Yes, uh, I'm having an issue with my video this morning. Okay, no problem. You're welcome. So uh, we uh, still have some questions here uh, to discuss about. I will go for a short break. After this short break, I will continue with the program. Don't go anywhere, stay with us. Welcome back to the show. It's the uh, your program, CNTV Weekly Blockchain, Cryptocurrency, and FinTech Panel Discussion. So today we've been talking about the implication and implementation of the current state of cryptocurrency market. And I have amazing uh, panelists, guests who have joined us from different parts of the world to discuss about this topic. Uh, in this discussion, we will be Sosuni, as uh, he is with us, Jack Nikogostian is also with us, uh, Fred Brandon just joined us now. So let's continue with the uh, discussion. Uh, recent increase, I know there have been news that there is a uh, recent increase in the number of Bitcoin ways and accumulation by whales. So we've seen a lot of uh, uh, wallets accumulating much more uh, Bitcoin. So, so what's your take on that? Uh, let me see, uh, Fred, what's your take on that? Okay, thank you. So yeah, I mean, I, I think it's going to be, I think your question is, uh, we see a lot of movement within the Wells wallets, or uh, is, is that the question? Yes, uh, we've seen a lot of uh, recent increase in the number of Bitcoin wells and accumulation. So a lot of uh, Bitcoin wallets have been accumulating for the last uh, couple of weeks. What do you think it will be the implication in the cryptocurrency market? Uh, I, think it's a, I think it's actually a good thing. Uh, one of the things that uh, I, I really um, am key on is the adoption of, of Bitcoin. Uh, understanding uh, exactly how this, uh, how the cryptocurrency uh, market and, and uh, how everything will go. Um, one of the things that you know, you know, that helps is you know, seeing uh, a lot of movement, a lot of adoption. Um, whether it is the whales, whether it is you know the uh, some of the. Uh, the smaller investors, the institutional investors. I, I like to see the. Uh, I, I like to see movement. So uh, it's it's all about adoption, and, and more people start to you know start to see this movement. It will promote uh, Bitcoin uh, further, and uh, I think you know as adoption starts to be on a mass scale, I think we'll uh, we'll start to see a little bit more. Uh, yeah, like I said, more adoption, I should say. 
Okay, uh, that's very nice. Uh, let me see, uh, Rudy, do you have a, 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 any comment on that? Do you, uh, do, you, do you have anything to add to that particular well, uh, uh, a, li a little bit, not much, but, you know, whales are whales, you know, selling or purchasing, you know, that, that uh, dump and pump, uh, <laughs> it's, it's been happening since, I think, uh, early days. But let's think of it, you know, uh, in, in another perspective, that it's estimated that there's around 1,000 users which hold approximately 40% of the Bitcoin in circulation. So... Uh, that's a big number, you know, uh, so if those 1000 people get together, you know, definitely there will be a big shake on the, on the market. Uh, if we take the last week, for example, uh, Waze only per uh, also purchased 60,000 Bitcoins in one day. And of course, the price is going to go up or, you know, when they sell, it's going to go down. This is this is normal and, you know, and we know it. But we've seen also in recent months also the Reddit pump and dump and how Robinhood uh, had to shut down its services. So it's actually nothing new and the market will continue to be manipulated since it's not full, it's not regulated at all. Uh, but as uh, uh, Jack said earlier on, you know, it, it will survive, it will rebound, it has survived. And it is proven now that when you see the charts, it's always going up, it's never going down. Even in between, you know, there's ups and downs, but that's the beauty of the, of the, of the network. Yeah, interesting. Uh, so let's look, let me get uh, to you, Jack. Uh, we, let's look at the innovations around the uh, uh, cryptocurrency. You know, some of these innovations are things that also add value to the cryptocurrency market. So uh, we're looking at uh, Coinbase launching of crypto stores. Do you think it's going to make a, a great impact in the crypto ecosystem? I do. I do, I do think so. Um, my own company, Arise, we're building uh, what we call digital cash. Uh, in the blockchain world, we call it stable points. Um, essentially, what we want to do is to create a version of government money, like cash is, uh, where there is no risk about its authenticity and, of course, its backing. You know, $100 is $100, but when you put money in a bank, it becomes fragmented and it becomes part of the fractional reserve banking system. And when you, as a bank, issue, let's say, a stable coin as an IOU to a blockchain, whether it's a bank doing it directly or a company like Tether yeah, with a partner bank, that instrument, which now exists as a token, say a Tether dollar or Circle dollar or Gemini dollar, they have an inherent risk built in because of the lack of kind of transparency on where the money actually is and how it's stored, the actual deposit, fiat money. In Arise, we're building a full reserve bank, whereas your digital cash, your, your money that you hold with our company, is backed one-to-one -one with assets with central bank guarantee. Now, that's, that's a longer story, but the goal here is to, rather than making a new kind of token or new kind of money, a new kind of smart money, we want to make dumb money smart instead. Because analog money, like fiat currency, even when it's digital, like in Denmark, the Danish national currency is more than 95% digital. Everyone has mobile payments installed, and we all pay our bills digitally. Even here, the infrastructure is based on legacy infrastructure, and money, even though it's, it's digital, is not fully programmable as we see with cryptocurrencies. And before we have a digital version of what my parents and grandparents and sister uses and understands, before that platform is directly interoperable with these blockchain-based solutions, it's, it's going to be very difficult to make things go mainstream. Now with the crypto app store that Coinbase is launching, they enable, as I understand it, they will enable developers to build these extensions and, and, and apps that can do different stuff, that can consumer face intangible and complex uh, blockchain based protocols. With Arise in our company, we have a similar approach. To handle digital cash, you will, you will have to download an app. This app, is called, this app is called MAMA, which stands for Multi Asset Modular App. And the modularity in MAMA is similar to the one we see with Coinbase in the crypto app store. The idea is that 
if you want a feature, you activate it as an extension or as a module. Uh, I think that these approaches are all part of making next generation finance available for regular folks so they can start trading and borrowing and investing and lending and all, doing all kinds of stuff, which is a huge part of the mission behind financial inclusion. Because today in Denmark, if I want to buy a bit of Tesla stock, I still go to a, 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 like a platform that has a broker dealer, which can trade on NASDAQ or an exchange. Sounds a middleman and it costs me like 10, 15 bucks to even put a trade. In the realm of blockchain and DeFi, this is substantially cheaper. And making these kinds of solutions available for average people, well, that will mean that the 1.8 billion people that are today unbanked around the world will suddenly no longer have to be. They will be financially included because you can suddenly buy digital gold. Oh, okay. Jackie, sorry. Jackie, because of our time, sorry, I have to cut sure. it short. Uh, I, there are questions coming in from the audience, so how, well, we are trying to make up time to pick them. Yes, what you're saying is a very good one. Innovation is really going to help uh, this ecosystem very well. Still on innovation, let me get your point, uh, uh, Fred. Uh, we see that A, uh, launching, you know, we know that DeFi is uh, uh, permissionless, not that A is launching a permission DeFi for institutional investors. They say they want to, that particular one is going to be an EOS, uh, EOS, and they want to uh, use this one to bring in institutional investors to participate in the DeFi ecosystem. What do you think that will be for the crypto for market? I think DeFi is, is, is going to be huge. Uh, you know, pretty much all of this, you know, when we're working with Bitcoin, and it's, it's going to be uh, decentralized finance. So I think uh, as we start looking into, uh, you know, alternative ways of finance, uh, whether we're using cryptocurrency or not, I think it, it gives us a, a better solution. Um, than being stuck in the centralized uh, centralized finance that we've uh, all known <laughs> known and loved, and I use the word loved uh, very uh, loosely. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be a great opportunity uh, as we as we see a lot more of uh, adoption, understanding uh, this space. Uh, I think that it's it's going to be huge. So as we uh, start, you know, teaching and, and learning a little a little bit more about it. Of understanding uh, the ins and outs of, of Aave and Compound and things of that sort, I think it's going to be a, a, a great opportunity for us and you know and uh, everyone to uh, you know change the way they think about banking. Okay, interesting. Uh, they will change the way we think about banking. So a lot of uh, uh, stories and discussions around DeFi and DeFi has really been being uh, excellently well though there are some challenges associated with it. Let's see how this goes. Uh, let me look at how, what it means for uh, the other community, the EOS community, Rudy. Let me see what, what do you think, uh, since the Eve is saying they are going to build this on EOS network, what do you think it means for Eve uh, and the Eve network and its uh, community? Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh... You see, innovation is really in, in the crypto is, is huge. Uh, we've seen, you know, NFT is not new, but it's been there for a couple of years. But now we've seen the boom. DeFi in the last eight months, it has, you know, big time. So more and more innovation will happen and especially more adoption and normalization. EV is the largest decentralized protocol on the Ethereum network, network now with over, you know, $10 billion in actually value that is locked and ready to be used for more, uh, for sure, more innovation. So uh, especially now the, the enhancement of F, uh, you know, they're always reinventing uh, their ecosystem. So uh, they created the Ave Pro, uh, which this move will go into more larger organization and financial clients to access DeFi in a more uh, CFI, you know, uh, uh, regulated ways uh, versus uh, DeFi in itself, uh, in, a, in a way, because now you can add uh, KYC to that. So there's a big uh, push in that community towards creating new innovations and bringing the, you know, the 
centralized finance in a way into the decentralized and that blockchain and Bitcoin ecosystem as a whole. So uh, strict regulations will come and all of this will be definitely solved by not just Abe and EOS and many others, but because the, that network, you know, when we say uh, DeFi projects are running, you know, big time uh, on the Ethereum network versus uh, the EOS itself as a network, uh, but definitely there's growth on both fronts and hopefully, uh, you know, we're going to be seeing more innovations and more projects soon. Okay, we're going to see more innovation and more projects soon. In case I don't join in as a CNT, the weekly blockchain, crypto and fintech panel discussion. So we are talking about implication and interpretation of the current state of cryptocurrency market. So we've had a lot of discussions and we'll go for a short break. When we return from the break, we'll now take some questions from the audience. There are a lot of questions coming in here. So I'll be taking them uh, when we come back from the short break. Stay tuned. Panel discussion. So uh, we will really uh, discuss a lot of interesting uh, questions and topic. Uh, so we now have some questions from the audience. So let's see. Uh, the first question I have here is directed to Jack. His, uh, this question is coming from Robin Gonzalez. He said, uh, "Is for Jack. What role do you see stable coins playing in the current crypto market, and what will CBDC?" What will CBDC affect the market? So that, that one is directed to Jack. What, Jack, what do you have to say? I'll, I'll try to keep my answer short this time uh, and, not, and not rant. I think that the development of, of central bank digital currencies, I think is really, uh, I think it's an important step mm -hmm. towards digitizing money and, and digitizing monetary flow and processes. I think it's really important. But a, comp a, a place like Denmark and Sweden, for example, where money is already digital. Like we rarely use cash and, and money is already in its digital form. So we can kind of look to Denmark and see how banks communicate between each other, how they settle with the central bank and how they do the different things. And nations that do not have such a digital infrastructure are now looking towards building something like central bank digital currencies. So I think the end game is for more and more currencies to become as digital as the Danish one. Uh, but like I don't have an account with the Danish National Bank, I have a bank account and they have an account with the national banks, I think there'll be these steps even in CBDCs, like national banks will use central bank digital currencies for their own bank settlements and, 
and cross intra banking and stuff like that, not for retail or for business uh, directly. Okay, now is there any other contribution from that? Uh, do you have a uh, thread or do you, do you have any contribution to that question? Yeah, so uh, I think CBDCs, um, they're going to have their, they're going to play their own role uh, in this. Um, I, I want people to understand that the adoption of cryptocurrency um, and, and understanding that cryptocurrency and digital currency such as CBDCs are not the same. Um, it's just really going to be a, another digital form of, of the fiat that we already have. So I, I really don't want people to uh, conflate the two and start thinking that um, you know just because you're getting into uh, you know Bitcoin or any other crypto um, that's actually uh, secured by cryptography is not the same thing as you getting into a Chase coin or a JP Morgan coin or anything like that. So I think understanding uh, what the, the difference between the two um, and that you know the banks are just trying to keep control like they've always had as opposed to uh, you know, being your own bank when it comes to Bitcoin, I think the, the, uh, the ability to learn and understand that premise uh, is what the, the, the public really needs to understand uh, prior to just jumping into CBDCs um, without understanding the, uh, the under, underlying te uh, technology behind it. Okay, interesting. Uh there's another question here uh, from Elliot Money. The question, do you think, it's still on CBDC, a lot of people are asking questions on CBDC. So, do you think CBDC of nations should be the first move before the general adoption of Bitcoin as a legal tender of a nation? So it's a general <laughs> question. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe, yeah, I'll, 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 hand, I'll handle it because I'm, I'm actually laughing. Uh, you know, you have to really thank, uh, who, who asked the question? Money. Yeah, Elliot, uh, I think you should ask the question, you know, thank, thank Bitcoin uh, and thank Satoshi uh, to create such a thing for, you know, states and uh, central banks and government to start going into something called, you know, uh, even though it is centralized, but at least a, dig a, a global digital form of, of, of money. And this is the globalization where uh, Bitcoin has a, a big leap uh, versus them. Uh, it brought, uh, you know, uh, inclusion, it brought uh, f new ways of uh, transacting, it opened the world for everybody uh, from uh, bad governments where they are suffering, where the economies are suffering, such as El Salvador or uh, Mozambique and, uh, you know, Lebanon. And, you know, it gave them instruments versus the CBDC. CBDCs, they should have been here for, you know, uh, of course, long time before. Unfortunately, they were not. Uh, now, as per the studies, there's around 80% of the world uh, central banks are uh, entering or entered or in the development stage in the CBDC. And hopefully, you know, we're going to be following the digital yuan. And as we heard today, there's a hundred million dollar, a hundred million yuan for uh, the people of China that is actually will be distributed. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that's happening. Uh, CBDCs are uh, the future form of uh, that digital fiat. And uh, as Jack said, uh, you know, he's already transacting in a digital form, but this will be hopefully in a better uh, digitized way and uh, more, you know, uh, more uh, enabled for the uh, for the people this is the most important thing because with current technologies and e-commerce sites and you know all of this you always need to reinvent the wheel uh, with uh, bitcoin or a cbdc you know later on where you can have one digital form of money and it has all the apis this will facilitate the people uh, lives through integrating you know, the shopping uh, or the e-commerce sites with such uh, technologies, not always reinventing and reinventing. And I'm sick of reinventing, you know, those uh, every time you want to go into an e-commerce, oh, I have to uh, go into an e-commerce shop or with my bank and develop certain things versus what PayPal is doing versus what, uh, you know, other uh, companies also are doing, trying to give us 
standardization in the market. So let's see what the future holds. Can, can, I, can I add one thing? Uh, I don't know. Okay, briefly. Yeah, because I'm briefly. The, the last four years of my life has been going towards building the closest thing to a CBDCs, a CBDC without it being issued by a national bank. Because we believe that we can create a full reserve bank that operates under banking licenses and thereby having retail and business clients under a banking layer. Because the fact is that CBDCs are not going to be for retail and for businesses. Because the second they do so, businesses will move any excess liquidity they have in the bank into the national bank to get the kind of credit security that a central bank currency would offer. And if everyone moves their money out of the banks, well, what you have is the biggest bank run the world has ever seen. So I think that the conclusion from the Danish national banks which were CBDCs are not going to happen for retail and business directly. I think that's a really valid point. And it would be cool if it happened, but truth is that money is based on lending and on fractional reserves. And central bank money is full reserve. Money in the bank is fragmented. So regular folks will never have a direct access to the Fed, uh, or regular businesses will never have the opportunity to put money directly into the Fed. Banks will, fintechs will, card schemes will, liquidity pools will, FX engines will, not businesses, not me and you. That, I think so. We are, you'll get an Arise account and you'll have a full reserve bank which has no risk and all the money is in the central banks, but it will be issued under a banking license, under existing reforms, not through a, a, a national bank. Okay, uh, let's take uh, one more question from the audience uh, because we are running out of time. Uh, take a one more question. Let me take this one from Ada. Uh, he's saying, uh, do you think the these regulations going going on will hurt cryptocurrencies? Uh, or is an open question uh, anyone can answer? It. Do you think uh, the reg reg regulations going on will hurt cryptocurrencies? You know, there have been a lot of discussion on that. With uh, there's some people believe that they don't want regulation, uh, some don't want regulation. And this question is coming up. What do you think? What's your thoughts? I don't think it's going to hurt in the long run. In the long run, I don't think it's going to hurt. And the reason why I say that is because with it being decentralized, uh, you know, it does not matter. All right. So, you know, they're going to, there are certain <laughs> countries that's out there that they may try to stop you from coming in and going out, what have you. But at the same time, you know, through, through the banks. But at the same time, you know, this is decentralized. So as long as I am, uh, I, I want to uh, have a currency, any type of currency, um, that I want to make transactions in. As long as someone wants to uh, receive that and they, they honor that, then it's fine. You know, you know, we're, we don't necessarily have to talk about uh, cryptocurrency. We, you know, we can talk about marbles. As long as I have the marbles you want and you're willing to make it an exchange for any type of product or service, then, then that's what it's going to be. So, I mean, if we think about this as at a long term, yeah, it, you know, it's not going to, it's not going, these regulations are not going to affect it because it, it really will be a, a decentralized system. But in the, in the interim, as we, you know, as some of the banks uh, are trying to uh, dissuade a lot of people from getting into cryptocurrency or, or you know, we see certain things like uh, certain banks, I won't name them, but uh, certain banks that's out there that's, you know, stopping you uh, because you, you may want to purchase uh, something from an exchange. Um, they're, they're, they're stopping you from doing so. So, you know, the, the banks are really afraid of what's, uh, what's about to happen. They're trying to put any roadblocks uh, that we can uh, in, the, in the way of, of, of progress. So, um, you know, in the interim, I, I see, you know, people uh, being a little... Uh, hesitant to necessarily get into Bitcoin or to the other cryptos, but in the long term, I, I definitely see that um, it, it will uh, it will prevail. Okay, interesting. Uh, uh, we, uh, because of time, we have some other questions. Uh, with uh, because of time, I don't think uh, we'll proceed with uh, those other questions. We, uh, we wanted to uh, look on China ban on Bitcoin mining, which is a very uh, hot topic now, which uh, you know people are looking at, is also affecting cryptocurrency market. We wanted to look at Elon Musk's influence 
and because of time, uh, let me know this is a very interesting discussion which we know can continue. So uh, some of these questions, if you have, you can reach out to our, our panelists, our guests, uh, to ask them some questions that you have. But finally, before we do the cutting, I would like to get uh, your predictions uh, before the end of uh, uh, 2021. How do you see the crypto market? Uh, you can, if it's optional, you know, some people don't want to give a uh, price prediction, but if you want, uh, what do you think would be the price of uh, Bitcoin or the entire crypto performance uh, by the end of this year, 2021? Uh, let me see, Rudy, yeah. I'm not going to go into the, the, the numbers, of course. But uh, in the beginning of the year, beginning of the year, before the big hype and, you know, the Elon story and uh, playing around and, and all of the space, uh, my predictions were, you know, we're going, uh, we're going high. And high was not to 60. But uh, with what's happening now with all of that uh, FUD that is really, you know, hammering, trying to hammer and all of those uh, crypto miners now, they are relocating. And, you know, even though they didn't really affect the price in a big, big way, uh, there was a drop in hashing power. But, you know, uh, it really didn't really much affect. Uh, because many of them have sold, they relocated, and new people opportunities and so on. But in in, in a general, I do see uh, you know a stabilization for a while now. Uh, this is my my reading. You know, <laughs> unfortunately, when I'm asked for financial, I, I try not to give financial advices because this market is never uh, <laughs> never you know uh, predict. It's not predictable. So. Uh, my analogy says it's going to stabilize for a while and hopefully we see some actions towards the end of the year uh, but otherwise for now uh, and for the next six months it's going to be more or less uh, the same okay it's not it's, it, you know, it's not a financial advice it's just uh, of course advice. always it's jack. never financial advice yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah jack what's your think on that um, again, I say, similar to Rudy, of course, I don't want to give financial advice, but my, my guessing up until now has been pretty decent. Like uh, when Bitcoin was hitting up you know, the 50, 60K, I thought, you know, I expected an adjustment and we saw one and everybody is crying, Bitcoin is dead, but this adjustment percentage wise is not unheard of. It happens all the time in Bitcoin. And when you follow Bitcoin since I did like since 2013, I've seen similar adjustments and I don't really have any Bitcoin, so it's not like I feel like I'm winning or losing. I, it's just an observation. And the, the adjustment now, I think, has been very healthy. I think that Bitcoin felt bloated and overpriced. Every single person I met wanted to get into Dutchcoin, Bitcoin, all kinds of stuff. And now, you know, people, the, the weak hands got their, got their slap on the, on, on the hands. And, and I think that Bitcoin is stabilizing around here and it's going to go up again to what it was like uh, to the 60k maybe even more um, we will see 100k i think we will see 200k over over a certain period of time um, but of course dependent on you know, it's not like it can't be stopped you know this bitcoin can be made you know mining can be made illegal and there can be a lot of uh, uh, a lot of nations going together agreeing we don't want to we want, won't want this and you know so of course I, if something like that happens sure it can drop it won't go to zero but it'll lose value but i think that bitcoin is a much more secure store of value than many other alternatives that we today use we have another hundred years jack <laughs> <laughs> it's a long way. <laughs> uh, okay, let me, hear, yeah, let me hear from you, Fred. Fred, what's your take on that? Yeah, you know, I'm in the same boat. I'm not going to uh, put a number to it. Uh, but at the, at the same time, I, I want people to understand that one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin. There's only going to be 21 million of those uh, <laughs> globally. And, uh, you know, even, though, even less than that, because we, you have so many um, that's either lost or, you know, in wallets or in laptops that's in landfills somewhere. Um, so there, you know, once we understand that, that one Bitcoin is going to be one Bitcoin, um, what we really need to do is start focusing on, you know, dollar cost averaging, uh, making sure that we have, you know, at least one 
you know, if, you know, if that's what you uh, want to uh, set as a goal, um, to just try to get at least one. Um, you know, I, I'd like to uh, equate uh, uh, Bitcoin, uh, a lot of people call it digital gold, I call it digital land. So, you know, if, you, if there was only 21 million acres of, in the world um, of land, uh, you would want at least one, one acre of land, something to be able to build upon. So if we start thinking about it that way, start thinking small, start thinking, hey, look, I'm just trying to accumulate Bitcoin uh, because it will it will be a store value, you know, you know, depending on where you are. Some people are using it in different ways right now, uh, you know, whether it is, you know, day to day use. Uh, but at the, at the end of the day, it, it will be valuable. Uh, so it's, it's just uh, we have to think about it more in the accumulation stage. And just like I said, dollar cost average, and you know you're not necessarily worried about these, you know these highs and lows. Um, you're just you're just uh, worried about the accumulation. Yeah, thank you. I really like that. Uh, some people think uh, about it as a digital gold. You think about it as digital land. That's a very nice one there. So uh, this is it uh, for today's episode of CNTV Weekly Blockchain. Cryptocurrency and fintech panel discussion where we discuss implication and interpretation of the current state of cryptocurrency market with an amazing guest, uh, with amazing guest uh, who joined us uh, to discuss about this topic. I really appreciate uh, Rudy Shonzoni Tech Strategies for joining us. Thank you, Rudy, for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. Likewise, I'm uh, very happy of uh, this panel and how, you know, somehow. Uh, we agree and disagree on some of the points, but in the end of the day, it's the same, you know, uh, outcomes and mentalities. And uh, hopefully, uh, we, we we will buy more lands soon. <laughs> that, uh, that's a very nice one. Uh, thank you, uh, Jack Nicolustian, Nicolustian, CEO of Arise, for joining us today. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. It was really fun. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Fred Brandon, our founder of brand new technologies for joining us today. All right, thank you. It was a pleasure. I appreciate the, uh, the invite. It's our pleasure to have you. So uh, thank you so much for our audience who uh, took our time to join us today. And this program is sponsored by Hot Community and Coin News Extra. So it comes to you every week by this time. Uh, let's stay tuned and uh, have other of our programs. CNTV, we are the first and leading 247 live broadcasting to, uh, about a book, live broadcasting TV platform for blockchain, cryptocurrency, and fintech ecosystem. We are headquartered in Lagos State, Nigeria. Thank you, and see you next week. Thank you. Bye bye for now.